Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Delivering Dunamis podcast, where we are inspiring transformation through the strength and the power of the Almighty. I'm your host, Matthew Dibler, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about risky business. Risky business, what do I mean by that? What I'm referring to is this perception of vulnerability that we often assume as we seek to align our professional identity with the identity that we have perhaps uncovered in our faith relationship, in our rebirthing process with Christ. For many years, I worked extraordinarily hard to hide who I was. I remember being in professional settings. I've worked in a sales career for almost my entire life. I remember being in those environments and feeling overwhelmed by the pressure not only to perform, but the pressure to perform and to look the part, to not show weakness. I was terrified about what people would think of me if they knew what was going on underneath my skin. And so oftentimes, I would walk into a meeting and the stress around delivering the presentation really had very little to do with my knowledge of the client or the services, the products that I was presenting to them, the anxiety that I felt was all attached to how I would handle myself in front of them. Would they be able to see how anxious I was? Would they be able to see the panic disorder that was lurking beneath my skin. You know, and as I would stand there in a conference room, I would feel my heart rate begin to rise. I would feel my throat begin to close up. I would feel that lightheadedness come over me. And it wasn't because I didn't believe I was capable to deliver the presentation to make the sale. It was because I was so fearful that I would be found out. You know, the same what ifs that would play through my mind in that season of agoraphobia when I would step outside of my comfort zone into the public square. The fear that at any moment I could have that nervous breakdown experience again. I could have a crippling panic attack. The same thing would always play out in the business environment. The last thing that I wanted was to have a potential client or a colleague for that matter to find out just how disrupted my psyche And really, everything within me was in those dark seasons that I lived through. When I had my rebirth in Christ in 2011, 
God flipped all of that upside down. He showed me that there was no shame in my identity. And he urged me to share my story with the world. And so I, I listened to that call and I went boldly forward, trusting him. I felt and believed very deeply that if I made things right with God, nothing else mattered. If I followed his will, everything else would fall into place. So that's what I did. Started sharing very openly about my mental health journey. And it began with a blog. And that blog, in order to make the content more visible, I shared that blog with my Facebook network, my personal Facebook network. And to many who thought they knew me in the past, it was quite shocking. Because again, on the surface, I held it together pretty well. I was excelling at most things that I tried in life. I was a good student. I was a good athlete. I was a popular kid. And when people saw it, they thought, no way. Really? You? Yeah. Me. I put on a great disguise. But the effort it took to do that was debilitating. So now here I am. I'm essentially standing naked on the stage and I'm revealing every aspect of my life that perhaps in the eyes of many could be considered weak. imperfect and the thing is in that space because i knew that god was with me i felt such tremendous strength i felt such freedom in it i didn't have to hide anymore and that felt amazing and i came to find out pretty quickly that many others were living the life that I was in that they were dealing with their own demons and they were suffering silently with them because they didn't feel comfortable sharing that battle in many cases with anyone. Not only did they shy away from sharing that story with, you know, friends and colleagues, but in, in many cases, they didn't share it with their family either. And again, that pressure to conceal was clearly having a huge impact on their well-being. And so when they saw me stand up and be very transparent about the things that I'm that I was dealing with, they were moved. And they believed that here with me, they had someone who could relate to their experiences. And so we became, in many cases, close friends and supports of one another. So it started with Facebook. And then I thought, you know, I can't do this part-time. God called me to be who I am full-time. And I don't want to sacrifice the truth of my being for anything. 
you know, I want to, I want to take this into my professional life as well. Because within that network, there are certainly others who could benefit from my story. And I would be doing a disservice to my mission if I didn't present it as though it could help others in that professional environment. So I had a LinkedIn account, probably got active on LinkedIn first in maybe 2009. And I spent seasons where I did very little on LinkedIn. And then as I began to kind of have this unique story that I felt had value to share, I decided Facebook isn't enough. I want to be free in my professional career too. So I'm going to take this story and I'm going to share it with my LinkedIn network. And this was about 2012, 2013. LinkedIn has evolved quite a bit since that time. When I began sharing there, you know, in 2012 or 2013, what I was doing was very taboo. You know, sharing my blog and, and my mental health journey was very taboo amongst this network of professionals, where in many cases back then it was being used as a, as a job search tool, as a resume building tool. Um, you know, you didn't post things like this on LinkedIn because there was the fear of how, you know, future employers may look at it, how recruiters may look at it, you know. So rarely did you see anyone step into that level of vulnerability. In a sense, I was one of the pioneers at the time. Now, that made what I was doing all the more visible. You know, I stood out like a sore thumb. And so when my employer at the time became aware of it, they felt threatened. Threatened in the sense that they would potentially receive questions about what I was doing from clients or potential clients. They were worried about what kind of message I was putting out there. And so I got contacted by HR and they shared with me that LinkedIn was a professional network and that they weren't comfortable with the content that I was producing there or sharing there, I should say. And so they politely asked me to stop. I'll tell you, um, that was a major gut punch. I'll never forget how betrayed I felt because this was an organization, you know, in which I had success and it was one that I felt comfortable in. I felt a part of the culture. I felt a part of the team. I felt as though I had people behind me who did support me for who I was. I had shared aspects of my mental health journey with my boss. He knew about my anxiety, but he wasn't comfortable, or at least his team was not comfortable with the world knowing about my anxiety. That was a 
apparently, unbeknownst to me, a behind closed doors type of conversation. So for a, a short period of time, I stopped and I felt awful inside because I knew I knew what the type of mission was that God was calling me to. And I knew that he didn't see any shame in me sharing my story. In fact, I knew that's what he was encouraging me to do because it was allowing me to touch the lives of others and inspire them to get on a path to healing and set themselves free. So I was really torn up inside. I, I got angry and ultimately I did make a decision to leave that organization not too long after. And, and for a bit of a different reason, but I will not say that that did not impact my decision in a pretty profound way. This is, I think, something that we need to deal with. And I believe that as the years have passed, we've started to. I see many <clears throat> content producers and, and many who are well thought of too, uh, beginning to share openly about mental health. And that's very encouraging, very encouraging. We're taking that stigma and, you know, that idea that the mental health conversation is taboo and we're turning it on its head. For me, the conversation about mental health is tied to spiritual health as well. And so any content that I do around my mental health journey generally involves my spiritual journey. Because I know who the victor was in my redemption story. It was God. He saved me in my darkest season. He brought me out of the captivity of agoraphobia. And so I will not, for the sake of being popular or for the sake of fitting in, I will not restrict myself from, from glorifying him and his work in my life. No chance. You know, as a salesperson, we often reflect on what kind of differentiating products and services we can bring to the table. How does our company or our solution or our sales approach make us more valuable than the competitor that we're up against? In most cases, many competitors that we're up against. You can look to, you know, your training, your education. You can look to the product itself and all the little features and benefits and, and shiny things that you can bring to the table. Or if you value the human connection, you can look to what God has put in you, what he has created you to be, and how that allows you to connect with an audience in a powerful way 
that extends beyond your basic sales conversation. Those types of relationships are long lasting. When you connect with somebody on a deeper level, the conversation is so incredibly fulfilling. You often forget what it actually is you are attempting to sell them. You're just attempting to be a servant in their lives in whatever capacity they need you. And in many times when that connection is made, that becomes a mutual giving type of effort you receive as a result of your willingness to give. It's just a really fulfilling way to do business. I'm not saying it always plays out that way. There are people who are committed to keeping business and personal separate. I respect that. I don't try and force my way upon people. But in the instances when I meet with that individual who is open to having a conversation beyond the product or service that um, I'm pitching to them beyond the dollars and cents, I invite it in because I just love people. I love people and I love having a positive impact on their lives. And I know that, uh, that people like that, that are receptive to those types of conversations, they're looking to be servants in the lives of other people outside of me as well. And so if I can share a message of inspiration or hope that they can take to their family or to their friends, to someone in need, then again, I would be doing a disservice to the Lord if I restrained myself from having that conversation. You want to be a differentiator. Look to your creator. You don't have to bring a new product or service to the table. You just have to be the unique You, only you can do it like you. Only you has the experience that you have. And God gave that to you for a reason. He gave that to you so that you could touch the lives of others. And so you shouldn't be afraid to use that gift everywhere you go. It's not just restricted to your family or your personal network. You take that with you everywhere. And you live it confidently, boldly. God doesn't build walls. He tears them down. God doesn't restrict the message. He proclaims it from the mountaintop so that everyone can hear. He puts that lamp on its stand. This is is a tough thing for people to embrace because there is this perception that by being committed to an identity that... um, is very authentic, particularly professionally, that you are making yourself vulnerable and you will lose connections because of it. You will miss out on opportunity because of it. And you'll be looked at as the black sheep 
because of it. What I'm here to tell you is people are actually yearning for this type of approach. Because again, we, we live in a world of great deception. We live in a world where the vast majority of people are walking around concealing their true identity. And so when somebody comes out and proclaims their truth boldly, it's actually quite appealing to many because it empowers those who stand witness to it. Most people don't like to walk around living in the captivity under the weight and pressure of having to conceal. It's just a debilitating way to go about life. So I can assure you that if you come out and you share your mental health journey, your faith journey, whatever it is about you, the experiences that you've been through that make you unique, it's going to resonate with somebody, not everybody. There will be those who resist it, those who criticize it, those who turn away. And that's fine. That's fine. I look at that as you're pulling weeds in a sense, except you don't really have to do the work. God takes care of that. And he does it simply by encouraging you to stand in the truth. And naturally, the things that don't belong, the things that are in opposition, they fade away. Sometimes we lose connections. Sometimes doors of perceived opportunities close. But it's all happening according to God's plan. What if that connection that you've lost was someone who was going to have a negative influence in your future? What if it was somebody who was going to lead you astray? What if it was somebody who was tempting you down a path that would perhaps affect your relationship with God? What if that opportunity which may have looked promising on the surface, what if it was going to lead you into great captivity? What if your purpose was going to die inside of that opportunity? What if you were going to exhaust your resources in that opportunity experience burnout in that opportunity? And what if God is closing that door for the sake of your well-being and your mission in him? Do you trust him? Do you trust that God will pull the weeds? I want to encourage you because this fear of loss is is crippling at times. We all have this desire to belong and nobody wants to feel like they're on an island alone. 
And so it's easy to feel compelled to fit the profile that perhaps we see as desirable in the current society in which we live. I get it. I felt that pressure for many years, but in God, I found the freedom. And as I allowed him to pull those weeds in my life, I created space in the soil to plant more fruitful seeds. You see, you've got to remove the weeds and the thorn bushes to create space for the new seeds to bloom. This is essential. If you want to see the abundance of God's work in your life. And again, you really don't have to do anything. You just need to be true to you. And God will take care of the rest. You will see the negative influences in your life fade. And you will invite in new members of your community, people who do embrace your truth. They will be drawn to you. With them, you will develop a closeness that perhaps you haven't experienced in your life before. Because there is a level of trust that comes along with transparency that extends beyond what we normally are accustomed to in the professional world in particular. And so as you see these individuals come into your life, you're going to build relationships with them that are, are truly meaningful, long-lasting, mutual. And beyond that, doors will open to more promising opportunities. And unlike in the past where you may have had 10 doors to consider, God might just open one, but he'll make it very clear to you that that's the one you need to step through. Quality over quantity. When you're under the pressure to conceal, you're vulnerable to the deception of the world around you. And sometimes when you've got 10 different opportunities in that space, well, nine of them could be wrong, dangerous, but on the surface, you'll never see it. From that posture, from that mindset, it'll be impossible to see. And it's like, it's a little bit like playing Russian roulette, you know? Are you willing to take that risk or Are you going to make a different decision to step into your truth, to live your calling, to embody that clarity, to draw in the community that aligns with you, with your beliefs, with your truth, with everything that makes you unique. Are you going to step into that and then take hold of the opportunity 
that presents itself within that network. I'm here to tell you that, you know, for me personally, there's no turning back. The freedom that I feel in my new life in Christ, it just, it's something I'll never trade. My future is secure in him. I lack nothing. And I trust that he will provide. And he has. He has. And I have to tell you, many nights as I pray before I go to sleep, I just marvel at his works. I marvel at how he brings people into my life who touch me in such powerful ways. People whose missions align very closely with mine. And he brings opportunity as well through these people because some of them will seek to advance my work and some of them need my care so he provides opportunities for me to serve whether it's that individual specifically or a broader network that they can provide me access to And it's all for the glory of his kingdom. Risky business. Is it riskier for you to live as your authentic self, as the unique individual that God created you to be, Is it riskier to be that full time than it is to conceal that identity and live under the weight and pressure of fitting in? For the sake of what you perceive to be security in your professional career, which position is riskier? Well, for me, the answer is simple. Because I've lived both ways. And I've watched everything in my life fall apart when I have not been true to my calling. It takes faith to go the other direction. That's a fact. And I won't say that it's easy because the world is pretty good about defining these boundaries that we're not supposed to cross. But if God calls you to it, don't hesitate. Don't hesitate if if you're in conflict with the world. If you're in conflict with the world, believe it or not, you find yourself in pretty good company because our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, well, 
he was largely at conflict with the world as well. So do not fear. Assume the risk in Christ and you'll find yourself on a path to true fulfillment. You do not lack anything. And though some things, some weeds may disappear from your life as a result of your transparent approach to living, that's a good thing because you're nurturing the soil that allows those new seeds to sprout and fill your future with abundance. God bless.